research shows that 90% of teenagers play video games, and I think I can safely assume all of you do too. With video games pass this time, they relieve stress, and most importantly, they're just fun. However, video games get a bad rap from people who don't play them usually. They often blame video games for tragedies like mass shooting. My name is Adam Masham, and I've played video games for all of my life. When I have free time, that usually goes towards video games. I want to give you guys some perspective on this issue. First, I'll show you how video games have been a scapegoat and a bogeyman since the 70s. After that, I'll show you research that shows no correlation between game violence and real life violence. And lastly, I'll show you how to be active on this issue and how to change minds. Like I said, first thing, I'll show you the history of video game violence causing mass hysteria. The first coin-operated arcade cabinets came up in the 70s. Even then, the public was scared of violence in video games. In 1976, the game Death Race came out by Exidy, which was a large arcade producer in the 70s and 80s. It was a two-player game where the goal was to run over gremlins and get as many points as possible. In today's eyes, it's a little funny to see how people may think that this game is sick and morbid, but those are the exact words used by a 60 Minutes episode dedicated to this game. Death Race was the first instance of video game violence that stirred controversy in the real world. People talked about the psychological effects of video game violence on people's minds, and it caused actual protests. Looking at this, it's kind of goofy, but this next topic I'm going to talk about is very serious. On April 20th, 1999, two students of Columbine High School killed 13 of their students and injured 24. At the time, it was the largest school shooting ever reported. After the shooting, it was revealed that these students played a game called Doom. The shooter's journals referenced video games like Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, and Quake, which are all first-person shooters and also detailed their plans for the shooting. The public quickly jumped to these games as the reason they committed the mass shooting, and Doom got the brunt of the backlash. Scientists heavily researched the link between real life violence and game violence after the Columbine shooting. The idea became so controversial that at one point the Supreme Court weighed in. There was a bill trying to be passed that would restrict the sale of violent video games to minors, but it was eventually uh, uh, repeal because it violated the First Amendment. Research has showed mixed results, but to quote Kevin Draper with the NY Times, while there isn't quite consensus, there is a broad agreement that no such link exists. After years of research, no causal link has been proven between video game violence and real violence. There's one experiment where about 200 students play either Wolfenstein 3D, which is a violent first-person shooter, or Miss, a calm puzzle game. Players could punish their opponents by sending them loud buzz noises. The people who played Wolfenstein 3D generally sent longer buzzes. The researchers said, quote, playing a violent game appears to affect aggression by priming aggressive thoughts. This research was easily dismissed as sending someone a buzz noise is not as violent as killing somebody. People that deny this like to speak openly about it, especially politicians. In 2007, Senator Mitt Romney stated that video games and other mass media were to blame for the Columbine and Virginia Tech shootings because they were full of violence and pornography. After the back-to-back -back shootings in August of 2018 in El Paso and Dayton, Donald Trump held a conference about mass shootings. Trump referenced video games causing violence, saying, we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. Politicians love to make video games the boogeyman and the scapegoat, but you guys can fight them back. There are many ways to show the world the truth. If people say video games cause violence, spark a conversation with them, try to argue with them. Show them examples like this chart. This chart shows that the gaming industry in Japan and South Korea is larger than the U.S., but they are among the lowest when it comes to violent gun deaths. Use the internet to shout this truth. Video games do not cause violence. Use the hashtag video games are not to blame, which was trending on Twitter after Trump's uh, conference. 
Use your voice to join your cause. However, if arguing is not for you, I wouldn't suggest that you do it. Arguments can get pretty nasty. And it's definitely hard to change people's minds on topics like this. In closing, I want to make this clear. I want you to convince others that video games are not the problem in this country. I want you to shout that from the rooftops. Incredible research shows over and over and over again that video games do not cause real life violence. They're just a boogeyman and scapegoat that politicians like to throw at people. Use your voice to spread the truth. Video games are not to blame. Fight back on the internet, stop others' blind ignorance, and show things like this chart because this basically confirms it. Video games are not the problem with America, and you need to find a new boogeyman. Thank you.